On today's episode of the Forgiven Nutritionist podcast, I'm talking with Sarah Van Hoos. She is a Ramsey Preferred Financial Master Coach, and that's how I recently met Sarah. Today we talk about financial health because financial health can spill over into your physical and also mental and emotional health. Her coaching business is called Journey to Influence, and I think you'll find the basics that we talk about helpful no matter what your financial health currently looks like. We even talk about some ideas to get kids started off right financially. Here's a clip from today's episode. Is that kind of a good starting yeah. off point for somebody? I think, right, a, a quick evaluation in a category in a category that surprises you. There, I mean, there's some value in taking a look at your cell phone bill or taking a look at your utilities and making some modifications, but those ones aren't gonna get you as much bang for your buck, right? So mm -hmm. find a category that surprised you and then see how you can maybe do it a little bit differently, especially if your goal is to find more margin or more wiggle room to put money towards your goals. And that's often the case is that um, folks are wanting to pay off debt or they're wanting to put more money in savings or they want to put more money in their retirement. So in order to put more towards a goal, then you have to find more. And there's really two ways to, to manipulate that equation. It's increasing your income or decreasing your expenses or a little bit of both, right? Usually it's some sort right. of somewhere in between. Hey so everyone, just a quick break to show some gratitude to our sponsors and give you some special deals. If you are looking for a trustworthy place to choose all of your supplements, Fullscript has 285 different brands to choose from. They did the work for you to check quality standards for all the supplements they carry. These standards are important because they help to ensure a product is safe, effective, and accurately labeled. Fullscript uses third-party companies to provide unbiased assurance that certain quality criteria are met when they add a company or product to their inventory. When you set up an account with Fullscript, use my link and you'll always get 15% off your supplements. Morgan, so um, why don't you tell us a little bit how you got started uh, with either Ramsey Plus or doing what you do or why you started in finance and talking about money? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good story, Wendy. Um, so now you're going to get the back end, right, of how I, how I made this uh, my career. So let's see. I'll give you the abbreviated version, but <clears throat> it was probably 2019. Uh, my husband and I were vacationing um, off this, this little um, beach in Mexico called Isla Mujeres. It's right off of the coast of Cancun, this beautiful blue waters, white sandy beaches, and uh, we try to get away <clears throat> once a year around our anniversary, just the two of us. And as we were, you know, traipsing around the island, we, we talked about, you know what, like we should have a retirement home here. Like how great would it be to have a spot here overlooking the ocean? And, you know, we started dreaming about that. And uh, we got ready to come fly back to Portland it, where it's cold. It was December, right? So it's <laughs> we're going back to cold, wet, rainy Portland. And I, um, getting, getting on the airplane and, um, I said, wait a minute. I said, why do we have to wait to do the things that we really want to do until we retire? Like, why do, why do I have to be like 65 in order to go, you know, live beachside? Uh, and my husband says, well, you make a plan for that and then we can talk more. And I was like, oh, green light. He just told me to make a plan. I'm going to go make a plan for that. So we are flying home on Alaska Airlines. I take my beverage napkin and I start crafting out a plan for how our finances would work um, while we are taking a sabbatical or a year or two off from our, you know, sort of regular life and living in Mexico, bringing our daughters. At the time, our daughters were probably seven and ten. Um, years old, so we're like perfect time, right? Let's go immerse them in the culture and the community and the language. What a great experience for all of us. Uh, we had had some success with um, Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps um, through Financial Peace University, um, probably, probably six years prior to that, roughly. Uh, we had worked kind of through the program. It took a few years, uh, but we paid off. When we started that program, we had about seven hundred thousand dollars in debt. And uh, we made it to the other side of having positive net worth, positive income, and being debt-free except for our current mortgage. So I knew the numbers, right? I knew what we could handle personally. And uh, because we had had financial success, right, or gotten out of debt, I knew that we had, um, you know, bandwidth. We had options, finally, that we had never had before. So I give 
uh, right, we're flying home, and um, I show my husband the, the napkin plan, and he's like, well, I think I need a little bit more information. Uh, so we come back home, and real life, you know, happened, right? We're back to school and to work and, you know, reg dinner and laundry and all the other obligations. And, but I could not get this out of my head. Like, I wanted to do life a little bit differently. And I, I just was aching for change in my current work world. And I just, I just wanted to do something different. And we finally had the ability to do that because our finances had changed. So at some point I busted out a spreadsheet and I was like, okay, you wanted more details? I got more details for you, you know? So I just laid out all of the, all of the things. And he said, okay, well, what about logistics? You know, like, what are we gonna do for a vehicle down there? And like, what about the girls and their schooling? Like, what does that look like? And I was like, oh gosh, the guy needs a lot of information. I'm gonna go ahead and start a blog. I was like, if, 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 if he wants more information, I might as well share it with other people, right? As we kind of get ready to go on this journey. Um, so I, I knew that the business or the blog had the potential to be more, um, but it was originally my journey to influence my husband to move to Mexico, uh, that, turned into, <laughs> you know, my journey to influence others. So I started a blog the summer of 2019, uh, yeah, 2019. And it was all around kind of this logistics of moving to Mexico, of figuring out how to do life differently. Um, and within that, I also embedded part of our financial story, you know, that we actually had the ability to have more options, um, that we had in one of the more popular blogs was, um, we were talking about logistics of like transportation in Mexico. And in that I had shared that we had paid cash for our most recent car purchase. And I had so many people that reached out to me and they were, they were just flabbergasted by this whole idea of paying cash for a car. And it was there that I realized that more people needed to know how to do something different with their finances. Mm -hmm. Um, at that point. So I was like, okay, there's a need here, right. For more people to understand how to, how to do money differently. Right. Uh, so fast forward a couple of months. I've blogged for a little while. It's a very fun hobby. Um, and I, I tell my husband, I was like, all right, like I've got the logistics, you know, here for you. Um, when can we move? And he, at that point he says, you know, like he's also an entrepreneur and he says, uh, you know, it really kind of makes me nervous, um, that I would be the only one responsible for our income. He says, I, I really, I really would feel better if you also had an income as well. And at that point I am, I am in tears, uh, because there's nobody knocking down my door for, to advertise on my blog. Um, I have worked in a brick building for the past 20 years in healthcare. I was like, how, what kind of job am I going to do? Um, or how can I make money online, right? Or virtual, um, mm -hmm. that would support this need for him to not feel so low, right? On the income side of things. Um, so it was at that point that, um, Again, my husband sort of comes to the rescue and he's and he saw an advertisement for um, financial coach master training through Ramsey. And he says, why don't you do something like this? You love personal finances. You, you love all of this that you've done for our finances um, and you love leadership coaching, right? Why don't you put those two together? So it was at that point that I signed up to uh, be a coach, get training um, and uh, took some business courses and uh, business classes around online marketing and business and put those things together um, to start my coaching business in January of 2020. Great. That's right before COVID. Right. It was, <laughs> it was a rough start. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you were online. So that, that helped a lot because, you know, nobody was meeting in person. So you kind of had that at least a little bit so you could still meet with people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Zoom was very, uh, very helpful. Now, I knew that I wanted... Um, the flexibility to be able to work from home to, you know, to be home when my kids left for school, uh, to be home when my kids got home from school. And so working in an online format was really important to me. And, and COVID really helped normalize that for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Well, I have a passion for helping those that struggle with any kind of depression or anxiety and uh, or anything mental health related. Um, and just the thought about financial stress, uh, even when uh, I had struggled years ago, uh, can really impact your mental and emotional, which then also leads to your physical health. So that's kind of why uh, I wanted you to come on today, too, because part of the thing that I've learned um, in my recent schooling, too, is that 
um, your overall health is not just what goes on your plate. It's, it's much more than that, although that is extremely important. Uh, but it's also your spiritual health, your emotional health, what your home life is like, what your work life is like, if it's bringing you joy, as well as um, your financial health. And if you don't have good financial health, that can lead to um, stress and anxiety, and which can then lead to digestive problems and diabetes and sleeplessness, and the list keeps going on and on and on, nice. um, which can also make you consumed with thoughts of, oh my gosh, how am I going to make this next bill, which then exasper exacerbates and makes the problem even worse, and it just perpetuates the cycle, unfortunately. Yes. So hopefully today we can talk a little bit about money and get to some of those basics mm -hmm. for those that need it, and maybe just a couple um, intermediate, I guess you could call it, uh, skills <laughs> for those that maybe already have some of the basics mastered and they're kind of are wondering what to do next or sure. what maybe is another another a bigger step they could take in those baby steps, maybe. Yeah. I like to say that finances um, touches so many different aspects of our life. Like you said, you know, we, it, we talk about relationships, we talk about your work world, we can talk about your family, all so many things, right? Touch money, mm -hmm. just like our health does, like you, like you alluded to. Um, so when we are um, fit, financially, right, it can help, it can help breed positive habits as well, right, mm -hmm. that spill over into other areas of our life. So again, like somebody that is um, fit, right, with their, um, their, their, what's the word I'm looking for, right, habits, right, in terms of nutrition, right, or mm -hmm. exercise or taking care of their body can also turn and translate to taking care of your finances as well. So one of the, the first things that I talk to people about, um, because most people come to me not just for a checkup, um, but more f they are stressed out, right, about their situation. There's something that is um, keeping them up at night that is worrying them. They have started to forecast for the future a little bit and that it doesn't look bright, right? It looks bleak. Mm -hmm. They realize that they need to do something different with their money in order to... Um, you know, get back in shape financially in order to to move forward. So we really start out by talking about awareness. Um, and I know we can we can we can mix these things up, right? Talking about health, talking about nutrition and awareness, right? We can we can walk them side by side probably all day long. But first things first, you pay attention to what's coming in and what's going out. Just start paying attention. You don't even have to stop what you're doing or change your your habits or your behaviors. Just watch it, like monitor it a little bit. Um, if you're ready to go a level deeper, like pause, just just a quick pause, like, huh, do I want to check out right right now, right? I'm with this online shopping link or not, right? Uh, do it, are these the things that I really want? Uh, you're sitting in the grocery store line, right? Is just pause, pause before you put something in your cart, pause before you put everything on the conveyor belt to go through the checkout line. Just take a minute, right? And, and be, a little bit more thoughtful and intentional about mm -hmm. what you're doing with your money. So when you when you do things on purpose, right? When you spend on purpose, when you save on purpose, when you decide to tackle a goal on purpose um, with intention, there's so much more behavior management that goes into doing something with that intention versus very lackadaisical sort of it comes in it goes out kind of eh, i don't know it'll, will it figure itself out in the end yeah maybe it will and maybe it won't um so choosing yeah. intentionally um to use your money one way or another there's no there's no there's very few sort of right or wrong things to do with your money your money is not a moral right thing that you know you're um right money's just money it's a tool um, and your heart, right, around using it, right, can, can be something a little bit different, but just money. It's just money. Uh, we all have some. Uh, we all use some. We all probably want a little bit more of it. I don't know, right? There's things that we can do with money. <laughs> um, but awareness and then, and then choosing to be intentional is kind of that next step. Yeah, that's one of the things that um, I will say when they came out with debit cards way back in the day, and, uh, well, especially now, they're everywhere, but it, when you use your debit card and you look at that statement, it definitely tells a story. You know, whether it's 99 cents at, at the gas station every morning for a coffee or a soda, uh, or you're stopping at the grocery store every day on your way home to cook, you know, to make, to stop for your dinner. 
Um, or are you eating out five, seven times a week? It'll, it'll tell you a story when you, like you said, you actually sit and pay attention and then you just have to decide, okay, how is this serving me and yeah. what isn't serving me anymore? Right. Yeah. That's such a great follow-up question. Is this you, so you can diagnose, right? So you pay attention, right? For two weeks or a week or a month or whatever time period you give yourself and then look back and, and right. Is this serving me? Is this, is it what you thought? You know, if you could have predicted, you know, would you predict that same amount for, and food, like you said, it is the, probably the number one area of surprise that I find mm-hmm. in my clients. They're like, oh, I had no idea, you know, that we spent that much eating out. Or I had no idea that we went to the grocery store that many times. Or I had no idea that my husband was stopping at the, you know, 7-Eleven um, every day, right? Those those pieces of awareness. And then you get to choose, right? You get to decide, well, how much do you want, right, to spend on eating out? How much do you want to spend on um, um, uh convenience purchases or and how much do you think you could um, spend at the grocery store to feed to feed your family like let's be more intentional and set some boundaries around it um, and then practice um, staying within those boundaries so is that something that you would say you would want people that's a good starting point is to be aware and then kind of assess what you have done however however long that you pick like you said if it's two weeks one week or one month kind of assess and then kind of evaluate what you've done with that? Yeah. Is that kind of a good starting yeah. off point for somebody? I think, right, a, a quick evaluation in a category in a category that surprises you. There, I mean, there's some value in taking a look at your cell phone bill or taking a look at your utilities and making some modifications, but those ones aren't going to get you as much bang for your buck, right? So mm-hmm. find a category that surprised you and then see how you can maybe do it a little bit differently, especially if your goal is to find more margin or more wiggle room to put money towards your goals. And that's often the case is that um, folks are wanting to pay off debt or they're wanting to put more money in savings or they wanna put more money in their retirement. So in order to put more towards a goal, then you have to find more. And there's really two ways to, to manipulate that equation. It's increasing your income or decrease your expenses, or a little bit of both, right? Usually it's some, some right. sort of somewhere in between. So decreasing expenses um, is a, a place that a lot of people like to start. There's less, it's easier to get started with. Um, and finding a category that you were surprised by is usually a great place. And restaurant, food in general is one of those areas. Um, sometimes kid expenses can be one of those um, surprising areas. You know, you had no idea that Johnny and Susie and Sally all had, you know, extracurricular activities that added up to X, Y, Z. And actually Sally hates going to that activity anyway, you know, so, (laughs) you know, so again, like more awareness and deciding what to do differently. And then it's making that plan in advance, right? So we, we are, um, getting we're at the beginning of a month so maybe pausing maybe reflecting maybe being aware right for a month's time and then looking at the end of the month saying okay well let's do something a little bit different this month let's spend nine hundred dollars a month on groceries or let's spend two hundred dollars a month on eating out um the dollar amount isn't as important as the um as setting the intention we're all going to have a different amount in terms of what's appropriate for our families or in in what areas that we live in. Um, But you get to decide in advance and then it's you holding yourself accountable to that number. So checking in with it. Okay, how much did we spend this week, right, on restaurants? If if we have a $200 budget for the month, so it's roughly $50 a week, uh, maybe you save some of that um, and you every other week you're doing $100 or you're doing $25 twice a week. You do you, right? You figure out what works best for you and your situation, um, but it's being accountable to the goal that you set for yourself in that in that smaller amount or in that um, different intentional setting. Yeah, I think that's always the hardest is when you um, have to face yourself and be accountable to yourself. Sometimes it's not as difficult with somebody else, at least for me, um, although it's very helpful to be accountable to somebody else, but when I have to face myself or be honest with myself, that's sometimes when I find it a little more difficult. <laughs> oh, I, I find that most people, myself included, we can talk ourselves into anything, 
Mm -hmm. right? We can justify, we can be like, oh, but I had the roughest day, right? Or of course we had practice, you know, three, three days late in a row and I can't, couldn't have done anything about it, right? We can, we can start to talk ourselves into anything and it will manipulate the situation, whether we're talking about what we're eating, right? Or what we are, um, what we're spending. Um, and when it comes down to it, we have the choice to make different choices. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, we do have to plan, you know, you have to plan to make good choices or better choices. Right, right. Unfortunately, nowadays, um, <laughs> most everybody, like uh, myself and my husband, we don't have any credit cards. But unfortunately, most Americans do have a credit card. So it, it probably makes things a little more difficult when they have the regular bills to deal with. And then they have a credit card bill, for example, to also deal with for something that they've already purchased. Um, what are your kind of thoughts on credit cards and credit score also? Because that's sometimes the uh, reasoning that people think, well, I have to get a credit card because I need a good credit score. Yeah. Um, so if there's somebody out there that maybe doesn't have a credit card yet or thinks, oh, I need to get a credit card now because I need a good credit score, what, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Yeah, credit cards can be... Um slippery i just think they they can be a little bit slippery um when it comes down to uh, using cash using your debit card using your checking account using a credit card they're all tools to manage money or uh or manage debt right a credit card would be managing debt um there are ways to use them um um wisely you know I, I i do believe that a person can use a credit card wisely but if it is your introduction into managing your money it, it can just be so slippery it's just so easy mm -hmm. to add to a credit card and not think about it in the moment um, because you don't have to you're gonna get a bill later and you we all talk ourselves into right oh we'll deal with that later oh I've got a big paycheck coming oh I'm gonna get a bonus oh right something else until something else happens right and it takes away that that extra money or that um, that opportunity so um, I, I caution people um, if if you are trying to get out of debt, if that's one of your goals, a credit mm -hmm. card is not going to be helpful for you right now, right? So step away, uh, put it away, put it under lock and key, un unhook it from your phone and your Apple Pay and your, yes. you know, all the things, right, that are connected to it. It's not serving you right now. So it uh, doesn't mean that it couldn't serve you later. Like there, there are ways to use it in a healthy fashion, um, but it's not um, helpful while you're trying to get out of debt. Uh, when it comes to your credit score, people often use the excuse, right, that I need a credit card in order to build my credit score. Um, there are a lot of other ways to build your credit score, including just having um, your, you, you can connect your utilities to your credit score. And we all need yes. utilities, right? You need electricity and water and sewer and um, even your cell phone bill. Those things can help build your credit score um, without, without needing to use a credit, a credit card. So there are ways around that if if in fact you need a credit score. So the beneficial sort of components of a credit score is if you wanna borrow money, right? So that's what a credit score is. It is really just shows you that how, how well or, or, not, or not you use debt. Um, so if you pay your bills timely, then you are you know, given a, a healthy credit score and, and you, you claim that you, you use your debt well. Um, if you don't pay your bills timely, right, you'd get a poor credit score and it says you don't handle your money well. So um, you need credit, you know, if you need to buy a big, you know, if you buy a car maybe, or if you need to buy a, a car on loan, if you need to buy a house on loan, there are ways to manually um, get underwriting to be able to purchase a car or to be able to purchase um, a house differently. Um, but those big ticket items, um, that's where your credit score is going to be more beneficial if you want to use a more traditional approach. Yeah, I'm definitely glad you brought up the, that the credit score companies, they do look at um, things like you said, uh, your utility bills, where you're, if you pay cable, they look yeah. at to, to make sure they just want to see that you keep making that monthly payment to cable and to your gas and electric. They, uh, I've used that before myself and didn't have to have the credit card. So I think that's those are the little things that people, it, it's definitely not marketed out there, that's for sure. They, they market credit cards all day long, but they don't tell you about something like that. So I'm definitely yeah. glad that you brought that up. <laughs> exactly. And the credit card companies are marketing 
they are spending lots of ad dollars to market to you because they have lots of dollars to spend uh, because of the interest that they are, you know, that they're getting from mm-hmm. you. Right? So they have these big, these big budgets that they, um, they, they make it look easy, right? And they make it look convenient and um, you really need to second guess, you know, they're just, they're super smart, right? They're, they're, they're key marketers yes. that are after you. They're trying to get you to, um, you know, get a, get a free airline seat and get a um, do- dollar per, you know, per hundred dollars that you uh, purchase, right? So do you really want to spend $99 to get back one? I don't know, right? <laughs> So what if people have um, kids and they think, because um, you said you have littler ones, um, but what if they have kids? Do What would be some good starter tips that you would suggest to them? Okay, maybe they've kind of looked and they've evaluated um, to just start saving something because a lot of people unfortunately don't have anything in savings or maybe they have you know $5, but then they need to spend that $5. Yeah. Uh, so what, what are some good little starter tips for kids, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So my daughters right now are 10 and 13. And uh, it's been probably um, well, a good five years, right, that we've had them um, set aside money for giving, saving, and spending. Um, so they they put about roughly 10% right towards their giving. Um, and then they split the difference between a savings and a spending goal. And um, as parents, uh, my husband and I have tried to be pretty pretty lenient in terms of what their favorite things are, you know, what they want to spend on. Um, if you, if you want to spend on, you know, 10 things at the dollar store, then go for it, kid. Like it's just, we've just had to give a little free reign, right. In terms of what's important to them or what they want to spend on. Um, I have one daughter that, um, really likes kind of higher quality items and will save even her spending money to have, a, you know, um, one item that is higher quality and I have another daughter that just just can't quite hold on to it for very long it just goes through her a little bit faster so a little bit of giving um, same with the giving we um, we try to find something that they're passionate about um, that you know lights them up in terms of wanting to give back and finding an opportunity to have them be able to physically give their giving um, either on a monthly basis or or even on an annual basis. One of my daughters is really a big pet person and wanted to give her giving to the Humane Society, right? So we oh. were able to, you know, donate it that way. So we really had to have to lean into the things that they really care about um, in order for them to get the value of giving, um, both seeing how it can impact somebody else or another organization, but it also feels great to give. Um, so yes. we tried to... Um, lean into their passions when it comes to giving and then um you know setting your kids up with um a savings account you know at a local credit union or bank is a is a great way to help start talking about banking and how that works um you know the atm is not this magical machine that spits out money it's actually your money right that's in the atm so you get to just have some more conversation starters and um, our older daughter um she's now 13 but she's had a checking account since she's probably 11 and uh, with a debit card um, associated with it, as I want to be able to help her manage her money when there are low, there's low risk, right? There's not a lot at stake um, at this point in the game. So teaching her how to transfer money, teaching her how to, um, uh, yeah, transfer it from her savings to her spending, teaching her how to monitor how much is on her debit card before she goes to the mall, you know, so that she doesn't have an overdraft fee. You know, all, all of these have led to really great conversations um, about how to use money, how to manage it, what goals to have. Um, so start having conversations with your kids about money and, um, and te- it's real life, you know, it's just like real life stuff. Um, our oldest daughter has almost $2,000 in her savings account for a car. So she's been saving for a car now uh, for a couple of years. And I, you know, I don't think I saved that much for a car until I was well into my 30s. Uh, so, you know, we're, she's, she's getting the habit, right, and, and helping right. to create habits of what it looks like to save and how to be content with your with less amount of spending. You just can't, you can't spend everything that comes in, right? You need to put some aside for a larger goal and then, you know, be intentional with your other spending. Well, and I think the good thing about that too is um, because I never had that growing up 
And I don't think my, my mom ever had that growing up. Um, on the flip side, my husband did have that growing up. So he then has shared that with his kids. And I think that much like that, you're going to, sh- your kids are going to share that with their kids and his kids are going to share that with their kids. So I think there's definitely something to be said about, you know, teaching and learning. Not that there's anything bad about learning the the school of hard knocks way that I had to learn. Um, there's definitely something to be said about that too. Um, but I definitely think when you have someone that can help you mentor and things, uh, that can definitely help for the longer term. So I think that's definitely good. Like you said, get them while they're young right away. (laughs) Right right away. And um, also there's just this, um, there's a, there's some pride in ownership, right? Pride in your own purchases, right? As a kid, you know, Mm -hmm. my youngest, the one that has a harder time holding on to money, there's been a few purchases um, that she's made that are in like the two and three hundred dollar range, and she takes care of that stuff a lot more than if she would have just been given, right? Those items. There's mm-hmm. just good pride in ownership, and you know, she walked a little taller, you know, coming out of the store having used her own money, right, to purchase something. Kids can take things for granted so easily, so instead of us just giving it to them, like, let's have them earn it and, and take some pride in ownership and, and know what it's like to, um, to own and take care of something. Yeah. Well, and hopefully there's some parents out there so that if they were like me and they didn't have that, that training growing up, um, they can reach out to people like you now and get that training for themselves and share it with their kids all at the same time so that you, they can all grow together maybe and, and, and start getting some, a fresh start. It's never too late to get a fresh start. It's never too late to get a fresh start. I find that a lot of people, uh, you probably find this too, Wendy, that have a lot of shame or guilt um, around how things were handled in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they, they're aching for something new, right? They're aching for a change. They want to do something different. And really what we, we have to really start with is that um, it's a, tomorrow's a new day, right? So mm-hmm. whatever happened before, there's nothing that we can do about that. We can't change, right? You know, how, what your credit score is, you know, what, what it was. We can't change that you have X amount of debt or um, that you just didn't learn more or differently growing up. But we can start tomorrow. We can start today. Yes doing something different. Um, so you just have to be intentional to choose, right, to do something different. Right, right. So what if um, there's somebody out there, an adult who has, uh, they do have credit cards, or maybe they don't have credit cards, but they have other debt for some reason, um, a couple of loans, for example. Um, what would you say to them? How would, if they feel a little overwhelmed with starting, okay, they they have money, do you think that they should start saving right away? Or do you think that, because that's sometimes a, a, a conundrum that I think people find themselves in. They think, oh, my interest rate's only 3%, but maybe I should start saving now instead and then just keep making those monthly payments. What would you suggest to, to somebody like that? Yeah, I think um, I I think that Dave Ramsey's baby steps are a really solid um, framework for how to start your money management journey, and that um, that is a thousand dollars in emergency savings fund um, before you start tackling your debt. And the the idea behind that starter emergency fund is that you know something is going to come up, like it just life happens, right? In mm-hmm. one capacity or another. So having a little buffer against um, against what those emergency emergencies that may come up um, is going to help keep you from reaching for your old habit or your bad habit of putting it on a loan or putting it on a credit card. You're just going to give yourself a little bit of distance between what your old life, right? And your new life. So it's just this little safety net. It's not going to be enough. A thousand dollars is not enough. Um, but it's going to help um, keep you from automatically, right? Turning to what what fixed it before or what right. the band-aid approach was before. So mm-hmm. have a little bit, right? In that savings account and then move to that debt debt elimination. And um, so Ramsey's philosophy is to use the snowball method. Um, There's a lot of different um, debt payoff philosophies out there. There's an avalanche that says, take out your highest interest rate um, debt first. Um, I'm a big fan of what's called the the stair stepper, which is kind of a blend between the two of them. So it's lining up all of your debts and then of the category that's maybe between zero and a thousand dollars. If you, maybe you've got two or three cards that are in there, 
uh, of those three, take the one that has the highest interest rate and then the next highest. So you kind of combine the two and then you move to the next kind of layer of uh, balances and then uh, the $1,000 to $5,000 range. And then you take the one that has the highest interest rate. So it's both um, the momentum that the snowball um, creates by wiping out smaller balances, but also it's the mathematical or logical side, right, of somebody that says, oh, I want to get rid of the higher interest rates one first. Right, right. Yeah, I remember when I heard that, um, for me, that was always a struggle, well, for myself and my husband, because he felt one way, but I was always the t- under the impression, too, where I was the type of person, and I am the type of person where if I had multiple like that, I would definitely want to get rid of those smaller ones first. I didn't care what the interest rate was. I just wanted to feel some kind of sense of accomplishment and satisfaction and pride that it was gone and done and I did it myself. You know, that that's how I would think of it anyway. So I could definitely see the logic to both because mathematically, yes, it would be better to get rid of the highest interest rate. But there are some people I'm sure that are like me where I would need to see that that satisfaction and knowing that one of them was done and I did it, you know, yes. and I got rid of this one. It didn't matter that there was 500. The other one is still $1,000, but I got rid of that one. Right. It's, it's progress. The momentum is really... It is that's what you need you need to kind of start the path like you have to feel it in your bones right this is I'm, I'm making a difference I'm doing it like we curbed some of our eating out we reduced we're doing meal planning right and we are reducing our grocery bill we we've made some small changes um, when you can start feeling that momentum and starting making progress on those those baby step goals or those milestone goals that you have for yourself um, you stay on a sustainable plan longer. That's the that's mm-hmm. the whole thing. So budgeting or financial management, it's not meant to just get you out of a pickle, right? Or just do it for this season until you buy a house, right? It's meant to be a lifelong practice, right? A lifelong habit of managing your money well. So sustainability is key. Like you have if you're going to do something, let's make a build a plan that you can do for a lifetime, not just for the meantime. Right, right. And that's pretty much what I tell a lot of my clients too when it comes to anything health related is you know, I can tell you what to do all day long, but if you're not vested in it or interested in it or in, or or able to do that, because you know you better than I know you. <laughs> so, you know, like I like I just said, I know I'm the type of person where I would have had to have done the smaller things first because I need that sense of accomplishment. So, I need to find that out for you, and and hopefully somebody out there will recognize that too. That yeah, it's it's about the long journey. We can't just do it to get through this little, like you said, the pickle that all of a sudden happens, that life throws at you. You want to keep going so you can last longer. Or start to save, which is my next question for you. (laughs) Uh, For retirement, I should say. Not just savings, but saving for retirement. What would be a good way that you would um, suggest for people to start that maybe think, uh, I haven't even started, at at any age really, and and what would be the best age to start? Yeah. Oh, it's a trick. It's a trick question, Wendy. Uh, yeah. So uh, obviously, you want time on your side. The sooner that you can start retiring retirement savings, the better off you are, right? You will just have mm-hmm. more time to earn interest, earn the the good kind of interest, right? That we want versus the debt side of interest. Um, so the sooner, the better. Um, but you do want to have a few other sort of ducks in a row first. So have an emergency fund. Um, we're going to blow past that thousand dollar starter emergency fund and really have a fully funded emergency fund. So um, there's a lot of different ways to calculate that, but roughly like three to six months worth of your expenses is what you would want to have in a fully funded emergency fund. And that's not a small number, right? For most of us, uh, it's like between 15000 and $30,000 in a fully mm-hmm. funded fund. So it's pretty significant, but would cover a lot of rainy days or cover a long period of you being without a job or whatever emergencies kind of come your way. So you want to have that emergency fund and you want to have all of your debt paid off except for your home. So the home or the mortgage that you have, you want to have all the other consumer debt taken care of. So that may take a little bit of time. If Perhaps like, you know, like I'm hopeful, like for my children, they won't start out of out in adulthood with debt, right? Hopefully that's not their mm-hmm. case able to contribute to their retirement sooner uh, rather than later. But in a, in a lot of people's situation, my own included, I really didn't start um, saving well for my retirement until in my 30s. Um, so get, get a few things to take care of. And then once you have that emergency fund and your debt paid off, 
then contribute up to 15% um, into your retirement. If you can do greater than 15%, great, but 15% is where you aim. And maybe you don't start there. You know, maybe uh, you start out with 5%, right? And then you slowly eke it to 10%, and then 11%, 12% until you get to that 15% is that um, sort of rule of thumb. Right, right. I know that could sound uh, a little overwhelming and daunting for people of any age, and I know that when I was my daughter's age, either one, which they're 23 and 27, um, I never once thought about what I need to save for retirement, you know, and uh, uh, it's just an unfortunate thing, you know, and until um, I think I finally, once I got divorced and I had my very first 401k, because at the time I was also a stay-at-home mom, so I didn't even have a 401k or anything like that until I got divorced and I finally had a full-time job and I was like, oh my gosh, I finally have a 401k. I feel so adult. And I was into my 30s too at the time. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that it's a it's a big interesting thing that everyone needs to think about, even if you're 22 or 18, um, and hopefully some people will have conversations like you have with your kids. But if they didn't, like I never had any of that training too. They can they can st- hear this and start to think for themselves and think, okay, what can I do, even if it's something small? Because <laughs> that those small things, like you said, snowball yeah. and increase also. Right, they'll add up over time. Right, you we all start out young and and think that retirement is far off. Mm -hmm. Um, But but really, you also don't, even when you're 22, you don't want to work forever. Um, So the sooner, right, you you are contributing to your retirement, the earlier, right, you can retire. So uh, little bits at a time, you know, um, we don't start out making a ton of money, right, straight out of college or straight out of high school. But 15%, once you get to that point, it's going to grow larger and it's going to accrue uh, over time. So again, it's that idea of splitting your income and not spending it all, right? You're mm-hmm. setting it aside, right, for your future. Yeah, definitely. What would you say is um, the biggest, I hate to say the word mistake, that you see people make on a regular basis, but what is something like that that you see? Yeah, I think um, I would have to say what, whatever the common term is now for keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, right. Yeah. This idea of, um, well, my parents have X, Y, Z, so I should have that. Or my friends just bought a new, you know, SUV. Well, you know, I should have that too. Right. My, you know, sister-in-law just went on this really beautiful vacation. Like I deserve that too. Right. It's this, um, I deserve it sort of mentality, mm-hmm. um, versus can you afford it? Those are two very different questions. Yes, you deserve the world. I'm sure of it, right? You deserve the vacation and the SUV and the whatever size house that you want. Sure. Um, But can you afford it? That's a different question. Right, right. What's a good example of um, a waste of money that people should avoid? It can be anything from the daily Starbucks Mm -hmm. to something big. What do you think is a, a common waste of money that people do all too often. Mm, and I'm hoping that you don't say something that I do. <laughs> uh, what is a waste of money? Okay, so a uh, little bit of an elusive answer. Um, I would say something that you don't truly value. If you are spending money on something that you don't truly enjoy or you don't really value, then that that would be a waste of money. But there's so many things that, um, well, um, can we use a, a Dave example for a minute? Like, uh, <laughs> he can edit this out if he wants to, but like, uh, <laughs> RC cars, right? Like, that's a oh, hobby, right? That your right. husband has. Could that be considered a waste of money? Maybe. I mean, I don't think I'm going to spend my money on RC cars, but if that's something that he values, right, and wants to spend his time and he gets social interaction with it, then, then it's not mm-hmm. a waste. Right. Um, I have friends that love a a social circle and get together and network at Starbucks. Right. And you end up, you know, I've got somebody else that says it's not Starbucks, it's seven bucks. Right. Because, you you know, you're spending six or seven bucks right at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Is that a waste of money? Maybe like maybe for me, because I'm happy with some almond milk, you know, and stevia in my at home coffee. Right. But if that's where you're getting your networking and you're growing your business and you love the atmosphere at your local Starbucks, then 
maybe it's not a waste of money, right? So I think it right. really is dependent on what is valuable to you. And if we spend in our values, um, I think that we find some true contentment in that spending. And we all have different values, right, around life, right, and, and money included. Um, when you are spending out of your values, there's some dissension and there it doesn't feel good in your gut. Um, so you you can feel that. So if you are spending money on something that is not something that you value, you will get a little sick over it. So avoid those things. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good, um, I wasn't even thinking of something like that when I came up with that question, but it's definitely well said because, you know, I think I told you that I've I recently come into essential oils and I'm like hugely passionate, but they bring me calm, they bring me peace, they, they light me up from the inside. I love sharing about them with clients and it does, it just, it makes me utterly happy when I ha- either get a new essential oil or put some, put some in my diffuser, you know, so I mean that lights me up. So yes, I definitely think that if, if something lights you up like that, um, as long as it's within your budget, then yes i think i think it's okay and it's not a waste of money um but yeah it's definitely hard to find some of those things that light you up and you got to figure that out especially when you have a lot of bills for example um luckily my husband and i don't have a lot of bills so we just basically have our home payment but yeah it's it's you need to find something that lights you up and i think that is going to bring you um joy um physically, mentally, emotionally, but uh, definitely financially if it's, if it's within your budget and, and put it in the budget like we put my essential oils in the budget. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you put the things in that you, that you really value that are, that are adding value. We just, we have to, I have had to release any judgment about what I thought was a good or a bad purchase, right? Or um, a good or a bad sort of investment or the way that you use your money because it's just so individualized. Mm-hmm. And um, there are some things like, um, well, cell phone coverage is one of my favorite sort of waste of money opportunities, you know, um, so that's maybe one where we can often find kind of a generic or off-brand um, cell phone company that could save, saves most people a hundred bucks or 150 bucks mm-hmm. a month, which is, you know, which is something, it can fund something else. Um, so those are some things that where you know, or your cable, you know, you might only actually watch four channels, but you're spending, you know, 175 bucks on your cable service. So those types of things, they're less value driven, but um, some savings can be found in those types of things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. So as we're kind of wrapping up, um, I always want to ask the people that I have on, what is their, don't miss this moment. So what would you tell somebody if you would want to say, don't miss this? What is that that they should not miss? Hmm. Don't miss this moment. It's a good question. And it doesn't have to be financial related, just because I had you on about money. If you have something else, then please share your wisdom. My wisdom. Um, As I am getting older and watching my kids grow, um, I... I am finding, and I've you know got two girls. I am finding the these weird pockets of time that they want to talk to me that are not necessarily my ideal pockets of time for engaging in conversation. Um, but I am watching for the cues that they want to talk, right, or they want to chat about something, and just trying to be available for those conversations. I'm. I'm I'm a little afraid of all of them, um, but I'm ready to um, be present for them. So I'm I'm watching for those moments. I don't want to miss those moments of conversation and and growth in their maturity as they're you know we're trying to not just raise good girls, right? We're trying to raise great women. Yes, that's that's well said. I, I really like that actually. It, it's important to watch for the cues when you are with anybody, whether you're with your spouse, um, your significant other. Uh, your coworker at work. It's hard to always watch for cues, especially when we're all plugged to our cell phones and our cell phones are <laughs> attached at our hips. So I definitely like that. And, and especially being present with the people that are in your life and especially with your kids. I mean, you know, my kids are out and they live several states away. So it's, I can't watch for those cues on the regular basis anymore. So yeah, if you have the ability to do that, I definitely, I like that. Don't miss this moment. 
Well, uh, why don't you tell my listeners where they can find you, follow you, or even maybe even book an appointment with you, Sarah? Let's do it. Uh, you guys can find me over at myjourneytoinfluence.com. So my website, also a scheduling link. Uh, you can book a free strategy call. We can we can talk money. We can talk about the goals that you have. Um, and then I am most active over on Instagram. So at Journey to Influence, talking about being intentional with your time, your talent, and your money on a regular basis. Well, thank you so much. And I will put all the links to find you in the show notes as well. So just in case people were driving or... Uh, didn't have a pen or pa- paper ready, I will put those links in there so they can click them and find you. Awesome. Thank you, Wendy, for having me on your podcast and uh, for sharing your knowledge with the world. <laughs> well, thank you for being on my podcast. I appreciate it. And it was a, I had a great experience with you, with my husband and I. And so, um, yeah, I thought, who better to have on for financial health than, than Sarah? Are you looking for a good probiotic for the little ones in your life? Seed PDS8. Pediatric Daily Symbiotic is a prebiotic and probiotic. This one is specifically designed to support little ones digestive health, heart health, skin health, and gut health. Their products are clinically studied and third-party tested for quality, and I think you'll be impressed with their eco-friendly packaging. Click the link in the show notes and use my code FORGIVEN for 15% off your first month supply. If you want to continue learning and hearing all things nutrition for your mind, body, and spirit, Click like, subscribe, or favorite me on whatever podcast platform you use. Or you can find me at ForgivenNutritionist.com. This podcast was designed to educate, inspire, and empower you to achieve your health and wellness goals with your current health care provider. It is not meant to diagnose or treat any illness or medical condition or take the place of any treatments from your current health care providers.